Tens of thousands of people across eastern Ukraine have been forced to flee the violence in recent months, most of them to Russia. Maria Fenoshna followed some of the refugees as they left their homes in the city of Lugansk. Valentina is alone in her dark apartment in Lugansk, packing. There has been no electricity in most of the city for almost two weeks now, and the shelling continues. Valentina has already sent her daughter and her granddaughter to family friends in Russia. They didn't see each other for a month. We meet her when she's getting ready to follow them. We will accompany her all the way to the border. Life just stopped for us. We wake up, stand in the bread line for two hours, then get water. And then we cook a meal to eat, and the same thing happens every day. At least when we're standing in line, we can all listen to the news on the radio. Valentina's husband was due to come back from a trip to their country house this morning, but he's still not back. The phones are down, and she has no way of knowing what's delayed him. But with daily bombings, she can't help but be worried. There is no connection, so I don't even know what happened to him. Maybe he went to visit his brother. Valentina puts in her girl's winter clothes and finishes packing. She leaves her home with six bags and a very heavy heart. Zinaida from Lugansk region has cancer. Her home was shelled twice, but she tries to remain buoyant. But even her optimism was not enough to deal with what she saw the day that convinced her she can't stay in Lugansk. I was at a bus stop and then I decided to leave for some reason. As soon as I left the bus stop, a shell exploded right behind me. Five people died. One man had his head blown off and a woman lost her leg. She says making the decision to leave was not an easy one, but it was a very quick one. It's not about the fear of death, but more of outright panic. Why is all this going on? What is this for? There are peaceful people here. Zinaida leaves and, just like many others, hopes to come back. But she fears that she will never be able to do so. While we talk to Zinaida, Valentina reunites with her husband, Andre. Public transportation is sporadic at best, and he missed his bus with no way to call home. It's less than 60 kilometers from Lugansk to the border, but this journey might seem endless to those forced to flee. Already in Russia, it's a mixture of pain, anger, despair and hope as these people turn a new page of their lives. Zinaida, Valentina and her husband will spend some time in this refugee camp at the Russian-Ukrainian border until they manage to get to their final destinations, joining thousands of others who fled eastern Ukraine, leaving their lives and homes behind them. They do not know what tomorrow holds in store, but at least they say the war is now behind them. Marif Noshna, RT, in Ukraine and Russia.